Welcome to the European Parliament and welcome to the um, hemicycle area. We are sitting outside the hemicycle. It's a bit noisy here, but people are going to and fro and wondering what is going on inside in this parliament. One of the most fascinating things is the Intergroup for Animal Welfare. Actually, the largest of, I think it's 28 intergroups. There are more than 100 members in that intergroup coming from various parties and various countries. You are the president. You are coming from Poland. Uh, being the president, I have to ask you, what can the uh, European Parliament do when the Commission says we don't um, accept that one million people have signed their opposition to vivisections to uh, uh, the suffering of animals? What can we do from the side of the Parliament? Because this is the very disappointing answer of the European Commission for the uh, Citizens' Initiative, very important initiative. Vivisection is a uh, big problem in, uh, in Europe and um, it is technically possible now to stop vivisection as a method of, of, uh, uh, of um, uh, ex uh, experiments and uh, what we can do. Uh, I, as a chairman of the intergroup, as a member of the Committee of Agriculture, Vice Chairman Committee of Agriculture in the European Parliament, uh, I will send a letter and to ask the Commission why they are not interested for the further step about the uh, citizens' initiative. It should be not practiced in European to, to, to ignore this, this opinion which was expressed by the over a million people. It's even and said in the Lisbon I, Treaty. I'd like to express my, th my, my thanks for the, all the citizens who signed this, this, uh, this declaration. And I promise that we will press for the European Commission to, uh, for, for the further action in this case. If they don't react, could you drag them uh, before the court in Luxembourg? Uh, maybe it is not not case to the, the, to the court. It, it, it should be a uh, matter for the uh, political pressure for yeah, the but Commission. They, sh they should, uh, by all means, uh, from the Commission, respect the treaty. And the Lisbon Treaty state clearly that you have to take up um, the uh, signatures of one million men, uh, people in the Commission and uh, look from a very new point on what is the case here. Yeah, it is um, absolutely... Uh, I, I, I can say that it is a scandal that, that uh, it, this, uh, this initiative was ignored by the Commission. This is a very bad practice of the Commission and uh, we will press from the Parliament for the change of the pos Commission position in this case. This, One of the uh, issues uh, which was discussed again, again, again uh, is the killing, the brutal killing of dogs in Romania. Uh, yeah. What is the latest standpoint there? Yeah, because I, I have the big correspondence in this, this case. It's, it's, we sent letters to the, the Prime Minister of Romania. We received an official answer from the head of the sanitary and veterinary inspection in Romania. The, the official position of the Romanian authority is everything is okay, everything is under control. There is. They created special uh, animal welfare police, uh, uh, which controls the, the, the situation in the shelters. Uh, but we have different picture from the uh, from the or, uh, animal welfare organizations, from the people in Romania, that the brutal killing of dogs is continued on the streets and. Uh, there the are the, there the, are only two welfare officers. Yeah. Which should and this inspection should call yeah. of the whole yeah, Romania. Yeah. This, this inspection is uh, in practice the, the, is not working because it is too weak to, to do something. And uh, what is the, the present action from our side? Uh, I, I'm waiting for the meeting with uh, the main advisor of the new president of Romania, Mr. Johannes. We hope that his uh, position is. Uh, and will be better for the for the animals yeah, because in Romania. he's fighting the corrupt uh, yeah, prime minister. Yeah, he's fighting Ponte. against the corrupt corruption, and this is the corruptional process, uh, process and uh, the treating of of stray dogs in Romania. 
um, that there is a lot of opinion that it is co corrupt. Uh, that the reason is corruption uh, about that. And uh, maybe it will be possible the meeting. Uh, I, I trying to, to organize meet, to, 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 to have a meeting with President Johannes in the future. The first visit uh, talk with his advisor. Uh, I hope that uh, will be continued by the but you personal have, meeting with the president. But you have a special card in your hand who you want to play your new ah, president. <laughs> okay, thank you. That uh, yes, this is big success for animal um, uh, friendly people who are animal friendly in Poland because the uh, Mr. Andrzej Duda, new elected president of Poland. Uh, he was a member of European Parliament. He, he was a member of Animal Welfare Intergroup. And in his campaign, the, the animal welfare was one of the most important issues. He declared, officially declared, that he never signed the uh, act which uh, will be uh, negative for the animal welfare. And he always signed the uh, new leg legislation improving the animal welfare standards. And he's it's very good active news. himself. Yes, yes, and uh, I hope that uh, maybe uh, Mr. Duda contacts will be helpful for the improving improvement situation in Romania too. To give a good example to Mr. Johannes in, um, good, in Bucharest. Yeah, yeah yes, yes I, I hope, yeah. You are the chairman of the president of this intergroup. Where are the highlights at the moment? We had today a meeting, um, at the meeting, um, a very interesting approach of uh, people talking about the equine situation, horses, donkeys, uh, and so on. Um, what is your feeling? Was it all right? Uh, this uh, we, we, uh, uh, this this uh, this uh, meeting was uh, paid for the situation, uh, equine situation in Europe, and unfortunately we don't have. Uh, special regulation for we have a lot of regulations for for other animals pigs uh, chicken etc but we don't have special regulations for 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 horses and we we need it and this is the reason that we will uh, encourage the european commission uh, for uh, an initiative in this uh, this matter and you were the man presenting um, what should be known about horses within the european countries what were the main issue you would uh, like to approach when we are talking about equine situation in Europe? Thank you. The background to the report, it came in the wake of the European horsemeat scandal and it made very obvious that the role of equines in Europe today is still hugely relevant. And what the report has sought to do is to try and identify the scale of equine involvement in European society today. And it's an incredible scale that we estimate, for example, 7 million equidae, ponies, donkeys and mules, bringing about an economic investment to the European Union of over 100 billion euros. Have you been out there counting the horses and donkeys and so on? Every single member state responded, both governments and NGOs and other organisations. So we actually went out to our 140 stakeholders across the European Union. Every single member state responded. I'd have to say that 7 million is an estimate. It lies somewhere between 4 and 10 million. We don't actually know. And that is one of the challenges that we face in, in Europe today with regards to Equiday is the lack of data and the lack of... Um, understanding for most European citizens and European governments and the Commission about what an extraordinary role equines play because a lot is known about elite sport horses and some is known about slaughter horses but the vast majority of horses lie in the middle where they're used for sport and leisure and increasing amount of other uses for example in therapy and in health but whilst some animals are worth millions of euros many, many of those animals are effectively worthless. And it's that versatility of, of Equiday that we have really tried to focus in and wh why we have called for within that report for species-specific legislation for Equiday. But we all love horses. Why is there a need to do anything about the way we love them? Are we not loving in the correct way? 
many horses, you're absolutely right, are loved. But the reality is in the 21st century, so many horses are abandoned, so many horses are left in conditions which are simply unacceptable. Their basic welfare needs are not being met. And there's a whole number of reasons for that. Clearly, education plays a really important role. But one thing underlied the whole report is that what we lack in the European Union is a system to effectively identify our equidae. Because unless we can identify them, you cannot promote responsible ownership. And without responsible ownership, you are going to get cases, there are many cases across all 28 member states where horses are suffering. But do we need legislation? I mean, for instance, it shouldn't be allowed to have one, just one horse. Um, it needs companion. Um, shall we leg legislate on these matters? Legislation has a role to play, absolutely. How we transport them, how we slaughter them if they are slaughtered. And so, yes, legislation absolutely has a role to play, but so does education and the role of responsible ownership. So we're not certainly saying that it's just legislation, but what we are saying is in certain areas, yes, we do need species-specific legislation for horses because we have it for other species because that's part of the solution, not the total solution. We all know that there are horrible transports of horses through the uh, EU countries, but there are even coming under poor conditions horses from Russia. Uh, now we are diminishing our contacts to Russia. How can we avoid things like that when horses are transported without food, without water, from, for instance, Russia to Italy? Well, obviously, outside the European Union, our ability to act is limited. But within the European Union, there is transport regulation. We believe the current transport regulation is not fit for purpose. For example, it does not follow the European Commission's own scientific advisers who say equity should not be transported for more than 12 hours. They have given that recommendation to the Commission and they have not taken it into legislation. But there is legislation at the moment and of course if you have any legislation you need enforcement and that's where we can have an, uh, improve the work the welfare of these animals coming from Russia, coming from which any other third countries into the European Union, as soon as they come, we have the ability to enforce the current legislation. We believe the current legislation is fairly unenforceable, but nevertheless, if it wasn't improved even today, it would improve the welfare of these animals. Could you foresee that the intergroup goes into action, takes action here, and try to improve the situation by putting some pressure on the Commission? Yes, the, the, uh, I, I'd like to, to remind that, that the European Parliament that three years ago decided that the uh, Parliament is in favour to limit the transport uh, of uh, all animals for but slaughter, for slaughter no, not more than uh, eight hours. This is, uh, uh, Parliament is in favour of that. Not transport for slaughter yes. more than, than eight hours. But nothing but, has happened. Nothing, because the Commission, we, we, we are waiting for the Commission initiative. We, we, we have to, next time, to press for the Commission to do it, because Parliament has, uh, has no uh, power. initiative, no power for in, uh, legislation initiative. And, but we will press for the Commission to, to, to change the situation. It, is, uh, it will be one of the, our action in the future. Thank you very much.